there that Kelvin talked about that he went to a 3-2 zone that really worked. We looked at the score and go, yeah, it, did, <laughs> it didn't work really well. He gave up 89 points. Well, this is going to be a fun matchup. Scott Perry's team is a little bit shorthanded. They don't have their starter, Quincy Oliveri. He'll come into the game and play. And then Chris Mullins, a starter, is not playing because of a hurt finger. Underway from Fertitta Center, Max Fiedler, team leader in assists last season at 6'11", where's number 15? Loves his hands on the ball every possession. Sets the high screen for Evie. It's back to Fiedler. Shot clock at zero, and a great opening defensive possession for Houston. Uh, you talk about establishing an identity. That's the identity that this Cougar team had all of last year. And quite frankly, we didn't see much of it in the opening game against Hofstra. What a great first possession defensively for the Cougars. Wide open three off the back rim from Edwards. Rebound cleared by Evie. It's the same starting five for Houston after the overtime win over Hofstra on Tuesday. Well, Fiedler ran the floor hard with standing under the basket wide open. Good backdoor cut. Carl Pierre, the grad transfer from UMass, was high school teammates with Travis Evie in Massachusetts. And Fiedler, the rare big man in the modern game, 6'11", gets out, and he's sort of the point guard. That's what Kelvin Sampson described him as. Uh, you know, Scott Harris said, we, we want Fiedler to touch the ball every time down the court. He can't touch it too many times. What a tremendous compliment from your head coach. Cheney, too strong. Fiedler have it. He was fouled as UH cracks the, the glass with Fabian White. Rice will inbound. It's a good team coming back. Top five scorers are back from last year, plus Carl Pierre, who averaged 12 points per game last year at UMass. Ten returning players coming off Harris' best season, the Owls 15 and 13 last year. I mean, how unusual is that in the year of the transfer portal to return ten guys and all five starters, five leading scorers, and the six top rebounders all back. A lot of continuity for the Owls. Pierre stepped back three off the back rim. Rebound brought in by Marcus Sasser, who had 25 on Tuesday night. White steps out for three. Uh, his first three-point field goal of the season, just 0 for 1, was not really an outside shooter outside of about 8 or 9 feet. If he can knock that shot down, boy, that's a game-changer. Evie misses the three, up-tempo from the Cougars, inside to White. From the outside to the inside. Five straight for White. Fiedler. Bounce pass inside, poked away. Rice basketball is 16 on the shot clock. Okay, Matt, we've already seen it twice. Houston denies so hard on the wings. Credit Scott Perra and his game plan. They're lifting the wings all the way up to the free throw line extended, so they're clearing out the paint, and they're setting up opportunities for backdoor cuts. After the three, that fade away for two. Here's Evie, sophomore from Massachusetts, transfer from VMI. Good defense from Sasser, five left on the shot clock. A really good matchup. Fabian White's going to have his hands full with Fiedler, and the challenge is they set this high pick and roll, the screen, and so while Fabian White will help, you can't switch off and put a guard on Fiedler. So really going to challenge those guards to get back to their man. Houston basketball effectively the second shot clock violation in three minutes for the Houston defense. Not the same team we saw starting the game the other night against Hofstra. Good use of the body. Tajay Moore was a star. Grad student transfer from Cal State Bakersfield. Look, I, I am so excited for Fabian White and the way he has started this game. He struggled a little bit in the game the other day. And Scott Perra knows that Fabian White is such a key, not only from a leadership perspective, but, man, he's been here five years. He has seen it all. This is his time to step up. And, man, he knocks down a three and then posts up a 6'11 kid. A great start for Fabian White. Here's Sasser. White flashes out to the baseline. A few dribbles. Back for Sasser for three. 
And right now it's the Fabian White show. I mean, they're running their offense through Fabian. Really nice kick out. Evie from the corner, short. Fiedler, tough one-handed rebound. And he draws a foul. When you're guarding a guy that's 6'11", Fabian White's lifted, listed as 6'8", he's probably 6'7". You can't just box him out. You've got to move back. Here's that terrific kick out pass by Fabian White. Well, you let Marcus Sasser set his feet and look at the basket, and you can just count that bucket. Inside to Fiedler. Kicks it out, open three. Off the back rim from Cameron Sheffield. Sasser gets the screen from Cheney off for Edwards. Extra pass, corner three for Moore. Two off. Oliveri into the game, wearing number four. He's in the game, but he lost his shoe. Rejection from Fabian White. Here's Sasser in transition. Crossover dribble, everything but the finish. He had Kyler Edwards spotted up out there on the wing, wide open. High pass, Sheffield tapped it to himself. Good defense for Moore. Timeout inside for Tita Center. Fabian White from the outside and the inside here in the first. Cougs up six. into the game but you see that brace he's number four he has on his right wrist he's right-handed so that's his shooting wrist but well he can really shoot the basketball preseason all-conference usa selection where number four battling through a wrist injury limited his minutes last game there's a rare turnover from feeler he expected the cut from oliveri now that's now three turnovers for rice they continue to run their offense and, and watch next time down Everybody's extended. You take the free throw line and draw an imaginary line all the way to the sidelines. They're running everybody up that high and trying to set up that backdoor cut. Floater from Sasser. Fiedler pulls in the rebound. Off to Travis Evie. Behind the back dribble. Evie from deep. Rice needed that shot. It stops an 8 0 run. Uh, he had 24 points against Pepperdine. He was 6 out of 10 behind the three point line in Rice's first game. Travis Evie, the Conference USA Newcomer of the Year last season. He was the second best three-point shooter in Conference USA and trailed only his teammate, the aforementioned Quincy Oliveri. Juwan Roberts is in, had a big night on Tuesday, wears number 13. Edwards uses the glass. A terrific job. When you throw the ball to the post, move, go somewhere, relocate, or cut to the basket, that was really good execution. Pierre driving, too long. Rebound clear by Tajay Moore. Edwards will pull up again. An offensive rebound pulled in by Moore. Tyler Edwards still seems a little bit hesitant. He's not just letting go with it. And when he does, when he gets in his comfort zone, and this is a kid that can go get you 25 points in a hurry. Reggie Cheney backing down Fiedler. Nice move as the shot clock expires. They will review that during the next dead ball to see if he got it off. Jetfield misses the three. Again, Fiedler drawing fouls as he goes for these offensive rebounds. There's Kelvin Sampson. He mentioned 16 offensive rebounds for Hofstra. And he said the difference in the game was Jawan Roberts entering. He said he was the toughest guy in the court for his Hofstra. He's why we won. We were talking to Thomas White, the assistant coach, before the game. He said the entire game, he kept looking up. And there's a banner that keeps the statistics. And he kept looking up and looking at those rebounding totals going, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He goes, I was worried for the guys for practice the next day. Leaper into the game for Rice, wearing number two. Had a nice game on Tuesday. Poteet has it knocked away. Good defense inside. Robert stripped up. Carlton high screen. Sasser back for Carlton. What a feed from Sasser. Uh, Josh Carlton doing a nice job catching that ball high and keeping it high. That's a charge. Evie called for the charge, drawn by Jamal Shedd, who had the critical steal. 
A steal that led to the Tajay Moore game time three with 24 seconds left against Hofstra. You know, we talked about it the last game, how often kids get in that paint and they pass and they float or they over penetrate and the hesitancy just get in there and jump stop. Pop both feet, keep your balance, and then see what the defense does. Here's Sasser. Inside for Josh Carlton, the transfer from UConn. Uses his body well, but could not finish. Poteet clears the rebound for Rice. Well, Poteet's a good-looking kid. Big, strong, and wasn't 100% the last time these two teams played. Leaper guarded by Sasser. Good defense. Oliveri with seven to shoot. It's Leaper. Great defense from Houston. Foul call. Uh, Josh Carlton had his left arm wrapped around the waist and tried to come over the top. And boy, they're going to call that 10 times out of 10. And that's a shame because they played great defense for about 28 seconds. See that left arm hooked around the defense. And that's an easy call for the official. Carlton, first year with Houston after four years at UConn. 115 games, 82 starts at UConn. Ooh, Rice does not look comfortable trying to run their sets. Poti, hands off. Oliveri, contested three is long. Rebound hold in by Edwards. Sasser, great ball fake. Got Pierre off the ground. Sasser short. Good rebounding effort by Josh Carlton. Look, Quincy Oliveri's playing. He didn't start, but he's got this brace on his right arm. And I was watching him in warm-ups, and he's trying to shoot. And it's almost like his hand's going up against the wall instead of breaking all the way down on his follow-through. And I'd be surprised if he feels very good with that ball coming out of his hands. Edwards misses great offensive rebound from Roberts. He saved it after getting the offensive board. Edwards off for Tajay Moore. Carlton screens and rolls. Carlton missed it, taps it back. Second tap is in. Boy, that's good effort. I mean, his first jump hook did not look good at all and tipped it with his right hand and then tipped it again with his left. 8 nothing Houston run over the last three minutes. McBride. Oliveri got a good screen from Leaper, but he missed it. Rice, one of eight from deep here in the first half. Carlton, nice feet inside for Moore. Moore missed it. Good defense from Leaper. Team 5 Houston Rice really struggling from the field 2 of 11 and the Houston Cougars Five points off the turnovers good start for Houston good at finding open teammates So you think about him penetrating and pitching out to Marcus Sasser and they haven't made a decision yet We don't know how serious the injury is right now They're just letting it rest and everything that the coaches say we talked to they're optimistic. They're, they're optimistic that he's going to be ready to go. Knocked away. And Coach Sampson said, we tell every family we recruit, we won't play their child when they're hurt. You have to play through pain sometimes, but sometimes you have to be practical. There's Terrence McBride, the transfer from Cornell. Fiedler peeking at the shot clock. Two to shoot. Great defense from Carlton. I think the students affected Rice on that possession. Yeah, they were counting down about four seconds quick, and Fiedler looked up at the shot clock to see if they were right, and yeah, Rice just offensively, they cannot get into their sets. Sasser from deep. Fiedler had the rebound. That's green light you, Reed, but I think not many green lights here in the first 10 minutes for Rice. Uh, Josh Carlton arguing, and I think he's right. He popped that ball loose, and... I think it went off Fiedler's right thigh. It happened with all of them had their backs to us, but 
Josh Carlton's not a big argumentative type of guy. He was really pleading with the official. Take a look and see if that doesn't bounce off. Oh, yeah, that sure did. He, Josh Carlton was exactly right. That's great camera work down there, guys. Terrence McBride runs the offense here. As Fiedler wants that back door cut, it's well defended. Fiedler waiting for Oliveri. Back for Fiedler. Fiedler inside. Great rotation. I mean, great rotation. Contested shot is missed by Oliveri. Another stellar defensive possession for Houston. The rotation that time down was unbelievable. Carlton making it look easy inside. Tajay Moore making the easy pass, and the easy pass is always the best pass. Carlton averaged nine points per game two years ago. His best offensive season with UConn. Fiedler draws a foul inside. Watch the Cougars scrambling, and watch the rotation. Contest, close out a back door, they collapse. Then they kick out, they rotate, and look at players just flying everywhere. Every shot's been contested. We've had three shot clock violations and two shots taken at the buzzer. That's a pretty good start defensively for Kelvin Sampson's team. Rice has not scored in five minutes. Travis Evie. Now it's Sheffield. Good close out from Sasser. And great defense from Josh Carlton. He jumped in front of the bounce pass. White made a three earlier. This time he takes it to the basket. Foul underneath against Rice. Yeah, Scott Paris frustrated with that call, and I don't blame him. Fiedler was doing a nice job boxing out Josh Carlton and got called for moving him out while Carlton's feet were in there. Watch to the left of your screen and see where the foul is. Yeah, I, I would be frustrated with that call, too. First foul on Max Fiedler. Let's be honest, if you're Scott Perry, you're frustrated with a lot more than just that call right now. White, short with that three. Fiedler, another good box out for a rebound. Six early rebounds for Max Fiedler. And off mystery, Carl Pierre. <laughs> that was Carlton. Kyler Edwards had that rebound. And Josh Carlton crashed into him and knocked it out of bounds. Kyler went, yo, bro, I got it, man. I'll tell you what, if you're Kelvin Sampson, he will take two guys running into each other to get a rebound tonight as opposed to what he saw at the start of that Hofstra game. That would have been nobody running into anybody trying to get rebounds. U of H now on a 10 to nothing run the last six minutes. Fiedler working on Cheney. Evie from deep. That's off the mark. Free this team shot 36% from deep last season, really struggling one for 11 here tonight. Offensive foul called on Fabian White. Fabian's going to learn. He loves going to his right hand over his left shoulder and people scout him. He's going to learn that right when he gets to that contact on his left shoulder, drop step back over his right, and he's going to be there all by himself. And that's just scouting right there. Rice watched him and knew he wants to shoot that little jumper. Second foul on Fabian White. Deeper into the bench, Noah Hutchins, redshirt freshman in the game for Rice. He wears number one. Sheffield trying to attack. Fiedler. Feels like Rice just yeah, can't penetrate yeah. the paint. They get to the free throw line, have to back it out. They, they just, boy, how do you talk about, it's like playing basketball with a swarm of gnats in your face. Stolen. Shed has it. Throws it down. Timeout, Owls, a 12-0 run for Houston. Top of the screen, the defensive player jumps on the high side and pushes him away effectively into a double team, and Rice has no answer for it right now. Shooting percentage, 13% for the Rice Owls. They're shooting only 10% from the three-point line. Another steal. It's Roberts. He'll slow it down, leave it for Shed. Good. Shed explodes to the basket, but misses the layup. Yeah, but still, that was very good recognition by Jamal Shed. Ooh, that's offensive foul. 
Leaper pushed off. Well, Rice is just absolutely overwhelmed right now. Scott Paris going, you know, what's the call? And it was absolutely, watch that right arm. It was great defense and absolutely the right call. Tremendous job moving your feet on defense. Leaper had a good night, nine points in 18 minutes. Five rebounds in the win over Pepperdine on Tuesday. That is now eight turnovers on 20 possessions. So 40% of the Owls' possessions in the first half have resulted in turnovers. Good jump stop. That's what you've been asking for for these last two games. Just stop. Let your feet hit the paint and see what the defense does. Now a 14-0 run for the Cougars in the last eight minutes. Two more for Cheney. He's up to four today. And you've talked about it. How many travelings and turnovers can be avoided by... A jump stop is a much needed three there from Jake Leeper. Well, look, if, if nothing happens, then you're not committed. Turn around, do a reverse pivot, kick it back out, and reset it, as opposed to going flying in there all out of control. And usually that results in a spectacular turnover. High screen, Cheney, Sasser, off the screen, another three. 25 on Tuesday, 6 tonight for Sasser. Oh, that's a travel. I mean, Rice has got to feel like they walked into a hornet's nest right now. Hutchins rejected. Good recovery from Cheney. A good dribbling there in traffic from Sasser to get away from Hutchins. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. You just stop if you don't have anything. Reverse pivot, throw it out, and reset. Sasser again from deep. He was fouled by Hutchins. He'll go to the line for three. Fabian White doing a great job recovering on the help. Look at him at the free throw line. Watch how far he comes to come over the side. That's Chaney, Reggie Chaney. I'm sorry. What a terrific block by Chaney. Holy cow. Boy, he is reading it. He stayed away from the contact, extended. Well, that's about as good a help side defense as you can see. Sasser makes the first. So, Reed, we've seen this Rice team over the years with Max Feeler as kind of the point forward running the offense from the free throw line. They had one backdoor cut early in this game, but since then, they're not really going through Feeler. What are they doing to slow him down? This is, I, I, know, I know Scott Perra wants to run the offense through him, but right now giving him the ball at the top of the key is not working. He, he's not making the right decisions. You've got a 6'11 guy, nobody else on the floor right now, over 6'8 for U of H. Make an adjustment, take him down there to the block, put his back to the basket and throw it inside and see if he can do something. Because out here, 25 feet from the basket is not working so far. One assist so far for Fiedler, Leeper. Nice, nice shot with the left hand. Boy, that was a beautiful left hand. He's matured. And his years at Rice, there's Sasser. Nice extra pass, but an offensive foul called on Reggie Cheney. Second on Cheney. Well, I'm not going to say it, because I've already said it three or four times. But if I were going to say it, what I would suggest is jump stop. You know, jump you there. You just, these teams are too good defensively, and that's what Kelvin's telling Reggie is that don't over penetrate. Somebody is going to rotate over. If you if you go flying in there and you pass the ball and you watch how beautiful your pass is and you're floating, I guarantee you, you're going to run somebody over and it's going to be a turnover, an offensive foul. You're going to sit on the bench and the ball's going the other way. Fiedler top of the key for Rice. Oliveri cannot find separation. Good help by Josh Carlton. Another turnover for Fiedler. He thought it was a kick ball. Jamal Shed from downtown. Another timeout for Rice. A lot of these younger players and inexperienced players have to prove themselves. I've got a, I love his reaction. He goes, you know, get the basketball. You go to the final four. He goes, well, it took us 37 years <laughs> to get to the, since the last one. I like that response. Whenever people ask me as a fan, I, I, my immediate reaction is similar to that. It's like, dude, you don't appreciate how hard it is to get the final four. But let me say this, for Kelvin Sampson, 
How cool that people are asking that question. Right? That's the expectation now. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we used to say, hey, any chance we can get to the NCAA tournament again? Can we get to two tournaments? Now people are saying, are you going to the Final Four? I mean, come on. Let, let's lower, let, let's give this team a chance. But it, it's amazing what this program has turned into. And defensively, they've been so good tonight. That last possession was Rice's 12th turnover of the first half. Edwards with five to shoot. Another three for Houston. Five of 12 from deep here in the first half. Tyler Edwards was just three for 14 in the game against Hofstra, but I'm telling you, he, he's a scorer and a shooter. Leapert tries a deep three. That's off the back iron. Good rebound from Roberts. Help shed up before running to the front court. Sasser will try a three. Woo! Man! Holy cow! Oliveri for Rice. The 15-2 run for Houston. Poteet trying to pass through a crowd. Ooh, that's double dribble. Poteet double teamed. Leapert with five to shoot. Kicks it out. Good hands from Shed. Oliveri for three. Air ball. Getting clean looks at the basket. And boy, Hofstra started the game, and I don't know. I would I would bet 80% of their shots in the first half were uncontested. Rice. Have they had a clean look at the basket, the, the backdoor cut to start the game? And I'm not sure they've had a clean look since then. Yeah, and since that backdoor cut, the Houston denial defense of those cuts has been outstanding. There's Sasser. Off to the corner. Five to shoot for Houston. Sasser, another three. Halfway down, tapped out, great effort. And then a fan touched the ball. You never want that in the first row. Let me tell you something, Juwan, uh, Juwan Roberts was on the opposite side of the floor behind the three-point line. Look at the top of your screen when this shot goes up, and look where he ends up. You want to talk about rebounding effort? For crying out loud, the kid went the entire width of the court and did some in over the rail. That is tremendous rebounding effort. Contested three is there. Much needed for the Owls. Travis Eby. Newcomer of the year in Conference USA last year. 14 points per game was 39% from beyond the arc. I'll be honest with you. I may ask for that rebounding replay a couple more times before we're done tonight. That, that, that is just is the epitome of what Kelvin Sampson and his coaching staff tries to instill in Josh Carlton and Juwan, and, and Juwan Roberts, and that is you go after every single rebound. Edwards with the fadeaway. Coach Sampson said he isn't doing anything that Quentin Grimes wasn't doing after transferring from Kansas. Similar transition for Edwards from Texas Tech. Kyler Edwards, if you're looking for a place to transfer, he had a chance to go with Chris Beard to Texas. If you're looking for somewhere to go, and you could absolutely bet that he looked at Quentin Grimes and his path as he went to Kansas and he struggled, and then he came here, and this coaching staff developing into a first-round draft pick, and he had an opportunity to go somewhere, oh, buddy, I guarantee you, he said, hey, I want to do that too. Do what, what you did for him, do that for me. And look, credit him. Chris Beard coaches his kids hard. And Kelvin Sampson coaches his kids hard. And not everybody is wired to handle that. Um, but Kyler Edwards said, give me, give me all of it. TV makes both. 39-15 Houston here in the first half. Carlton, patient in the paint. Could not get his own rebound. 
You see how he's forcing everything over his left shoulder, and the defense is playing that. He's got to drop step over the right shoulder. Oti, top of the key. Hands off for Oliveri, who pulls up for from deep. Another miss for Rice. Rebound pulled in by Roberts. Rice, three for 15 behind the three-point line. Sasser misses from the free throw. Evie with the rebound for Rice. Oti, hands off. Cameron Sheffield, Oliveri. Another block shot for Houston. Poteet picks up the loose ball. Evie from the corner. Open threes being missed by Rice now. And look at the toughness. Jamal Shed with the strip. Three on two Cougars. Blocking foul. Uh, Free throws coming for Edwards. Let me tell you something. That was basket interference by Marcus Sasser. That ball was going in. Marcus Sasser was coming down the right side. His hand got caught in the net and made the rim bounce out. Watch this, watch Sasser hustling down. The ball sitting on the rim and watch it bounce out because Sasser hit it. That ball was going in. If I'm Kyler Edwards, I go, yeah, man. He's to the bucket for me. Well, that's the energy, though. I think the positive, though, Reed, is the energy. They're flying to the basket. They're looking for offensive rebounds. I think Sampson and the coaching staff would take that kind of effort. In fast break basketball, you have three lanes. You have someone running down the middle, and you're most effective when you can fill those outside lanes. And you had Kyler Edwards on the left side. You had Sasser flying down on the right side. And, boy, that will overwhelm any defense. Edwards makes both. He has eight points here in the first half. All Cougars. Here on a Friday night in Houston. Here to Poteet, double team. Poteet tries to bully his way to the basket. McBride with a few crossovers. Hands off for Travis Evie. Evie with a deep three, short. Pierre with the loose ball rebound. Fiedler behind the back feed. Nice feed for Poteet. And he'll go to the free throw line. Poteet, that move we've been talking about, that when you a post player and you hit somebody with your left shoulder, drop step over your right. Poteet did a nice job with that, but then he tried to finish straight up and down instead of crashing through the bottom of the backboard. But, man, this is a big, strong kid right here. Elijah Poteet, freshman from Reedsville, North Carolina. This is an offense that was very good last year. I mean, they were. Fourth in Conference USA average, 74 points per game. Not a great defense, 13th best. They also allow 74 points per game. Well, their first game of the year was against Pepperdine. That team's coached by Lorenzo Romar, a really well-coached team. And Rice just blasted them. I mean, they smoked them 82 to 63 in that game. Sasser in the paint. 14 points for Marcus Sasser. Is he at his best when he attacks the basket? Yeah, he's at his best when Jamal Shedd is at his best. A steal from Sasser and a timeout for Sampson. He, he has to use one before halftime. If I'm Scott Perra, I'm saying, no, he doesn't. <laughs> he just let... 27-point lead for Houston. Jamal Shedd, a sophomore from Maynard, Texas, Maynard High School. The U of H logo at midcourt. Back to Sasser, who peeks at the clock. High screen Carlson. Five seconds left. Sasser from the free throw line. 16 for Marcus Sasser. And Houston heads to the rebound, but three turnovers, only one assist. For one of these Rice stars. If you're looking for an adjustment for Rice, I would sure try some kind of set and put Fiedler down there with his back to the basket and give him a chance to do something to get into a rhythm of this game. Can you guess the message from Scott Parrott to Rice at halftime? Yeah, you, you can't. The, the kids are already overwhelmed. You can't go in and yell at them and get on them. You know, they're already embarrassed. They've got their tail tucked between their legs. And what you say is, okay, forget it. Worst half of basketball we'll play all year long. Score zero to zero. Let's come out and play Rice out basketball. Early touches for Fabian White. Kicks it out. Tajay Moore. Short. Hustling offensive rebound. It'll be a Rice basketball. 
And Cheney in the first row, helping out White. Cheney limping back on defense, and here comes Tajay Moore. And they had three Cougars go after that loose ball. And Rice comes out with Terrence McBride. Again, no Chris Mullins, one of the elder statesmen on the trip, the best man-on-man -on -man defender. He is out with a finger injury. Oliveri limited, he came off the bench, and inside, right on Q Reed. A fine feeler for his first two points inside. Yeah, really good adjustment by Scott Pear. I mean, get him going, let him catch the balls. He's seven feet, he's got long arms. Boy, you have a hard time. If you're going to front him, that, oh, that lob over the top is going to be open. Sasser, top of the key. White again in and out. Good hustle for Moore to fight for that loose ball. Sasser, no look pass for Cheney, who missed the layup. Good defense from Fiedler. That was a call. I don't know about that. I, you know, both, both players had the ball. I thought it was going to be a jump ball, and then I thought he was out of bounds, and they called a foul, I think, on Fabian White. Oh, yeah, he did foul. Him. <laughs> that was a good call. By the way, Reed, only four points in the paint of the first half, so more of that there with Fiedler in his opening bucket. Here's Fiedler dashing in the basket. Great defense. Tajay Moore knocks it away. It's an eight steal for Houston. Right back to Sasser. Another three. Now two possessions for Rice, and two times they tried to slam that ball inside to Max Fiedler. Sasser, we saw him before the game where he was so focused during the pregame introductions, he has not lost that steely game. Yeah, you said that. You said, man, he has got his game face on. Good defense again. Ten to shoot for the Owls. Evie with a, another pass to the corner. Nice shot. Contested Terrence McBride, the transfer from Cornell. That's his first three-pointer of the season. That was a much-needed basket for the Rice Owls. Knocked out. On the prior possession read, it's maybe more, more maturity from Sasser, understanding if I give the ball up, my teammates will get it back to me. Uh, that's when he's at his best. And, and, and look, he can dribble, penetrate, but boy, if he can get off the ball and then get it back. Man, he change that. Edwards for three. Houston, eight for 18 from beyond the arc tonight. Edwards has 11. Open three off the back iron. Offensive rebound. Another three missed. Rebound pulled in by Edwards. Sasser thought about it. He's red hot right now. Reverse layup. Marcus Sasser, who has 21. And Marcus Sasser doing such a nice job of getting to the rim or shooting threes and nothing in between. Fiedler double team. Throws it off a Houston defender as Cheney and White get out there. Now Scott Paris really on the officials over there. I don't know what he's upset about it. Maybe he thought Fiedler was fouled, but man, they're really having a conversation on the sideline. A prior possession, ending with a reverse layup for Sasser. Inside, there's a jump stop. Good hands from Edwards, he knocked it away. Edwards forces the turnover. Carl Pierre made a really nice cut, came to a jump stop, pump faked it, and brought that ball down and stuck it right in front of Kyler Edwards and gave him a chance to knock it free. Same starting five for Houston here in the second half. Same starting five for Rice. Good strength from Cheney, draws a foul against Fiedler. Reggie Cheney's as good as anybody I've seen in a long time at being able to turn over his right shoulder or left shoulder and use his left hand. He's right-handed, but look how well he goes to the left hand and gives that ball a chance to get up over the rim and go in. Reggie Cheney from Dallas. First two seasons in Arkansas was a big part of last year's Final Four team. 32 games, 13 starts.
We haven't seen it in the first two games, but Reggie Chaney is an excellent passer. Now, sometimes they have this set where he comes up to the elbow right at the corner where the free throw line hits the lane. And, well, he is really good at throwing bounce passes and backdoor cuts. He makes both. Another 7 nothing run for Houston. 34 point lead. The largest of the night for the Cougars, and the defensive intensity continues. Sheffield attacking. Foul by Cheney on his way up. Can you think of one defensive possession the Cougars have taken off tonight? I, you know, I was trying to think how many open shots. I think one time in the first half, Price had a, a clean look at the basket. And I think they've had one here. But golly, I mean, just for Scott Perra, every time somebody thinks they're open, man, the Cougars are rotating and closing out so quickly that for any open time or space, it closes up in a hurry. Jeffco makes both. Freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. Yeah. One, the one category they're hanging around Reed is rebounding. 22 apiece in this game, but everything else is in favor of Houston. Yeah, and especially points off turnovers. Now 0 to 23 is here in the Crossover from Shed. Offensive rebound. Dominant put back there from Reggie Chaney. What Reggie does so well, we talked about Poteet in the first half, just trying to score inside, going straight up and down. If you hang a curtain from the bottom of the backboard, Reggie Chaney crashes through that backboard. He finishes this through the backboard. Watch him grab this rebound, make contact. He doesn't go straight up and down. He goes through it and finishes strong. And boy, that is a big, strong play by Reggie Chaney. And right now, the Cougars are rolling up by 34. With seven tonight, but I think some of those are just extra effort from Houston and maybe guys a little bit out of position for a rebound because they're helping out so much. Well, and as good as Houston's been defensively, they have been just as good offensively taking care of the ball. Right, Rice is a good defensive team. But they don't have a steal yet in this game. Two turnovers tonight for the Cougars. Kyler Edwards from the corner. Missed it. Extra effort from Fabian White. Knocks it off a Rice player. It's Houston basketball. Fiedler goes to the bench. He picked up his third foul on the three-point play opportunity for Reggie Cheney. Tough night for Fiedler. Carlton hands it off. Edwards lost it. Only the third turnover tonight for Houston. Here comes Quincy Oliveri for Rice. Cameron Sheffield. Abercrombie's in for Rice. Excellent defense from White. Nowhere to go for Cameron Sheffield. Uh, Scott Paris complaining, but that was excellent defense. He gave up his step. He kept his arms straight up. He jumps. He jumped up, but he did not put a lid over the top. And well, you cannot play better defense on a penetrating player than Fabian White just played. Riley Abercrombie from Australia. His first minutes tonight, by number 11. Help side defense at the block. Great rotation by Tyler Edwards on the weak side. Nowhere to go for Rice. Good ball fake. Abercrombie contested shot. Good recovery from Josh Carlton. Made it difficult. Jamal Shed into the paint. White thought about it. Tyler Edwards is standing out here on the left all by himself in transition. White takes the double team, missed the turnaround. Leaper with the rebound for Rice. Deep three from Evie, right there. Travis Evie, Conference USA Newcomer of the Year last season. His second made three tonight. He's got his third, he's up to 11 points. Shed running the offense here for Houston. It's the screen from Carlton. Tanje Moore misses offensive rebound from Edwards. Shed back for Moore. Great ball movement. Edwards missed it. 
Rice much more competitive since halftime, Reed. It's 12-10 Cougars since the break. Abercrombie, good ball fake. Nice job, Moore in the passing lanes. Ajay Moore closed out on Sheffield and was still able to deflect that ball going down to Travis Evie. And I'm telling you, this kid can cover an unbelievable amount of distance and space quicker than anybody I've ever seen. Watch him go out, close out, takes away the shot, still recovers to the passing lane to deflect it. Well, that's pretty good. Tajay Moore, the grad transfer from Cal State Bakersfield. Abercrombie with Fiedler playing with three fouls. Hands off for Leeper. Leeper hesitation. Draws a foul. Either Sasser or Shed. What is Rice doing differently since halftime to be more competitive? Uh, they're being stronger with the basketball. And I was just thinking, Leeford has been their best player offensively. He has played with confidence, and he took one bad shot for Scott Perra in the first half. But since then, he has been really aggressive. Uh, Scott Perra is asking for a shooting foul, and I think he's right. I don't know how they call that foul on the ground. He's gathered and was pulling himself up. Mike Nance, Arcucci, Patrick Evans. Christopher Merlo, the other officials. Hand it off to Evie. Oliveri looking for space, playing through the wrist injury. Low pass to Fiedler, nice hands from the big man. Abercrombie from the left wing, off the back iron. Rice 5 for 22 from beyond the arc today. Sasser back in the game. Game high 21 points for Marcus Sasser. Jamal Shed, very patient, mid-range pull up missed. Leeper got caught in the air, but failed out there by Oliveri. Uh-oh. Tajay Moore! Another steal, uh -oh. but he may have hurt his left wrist in some pain as he walks away. I think he got down in front of him. Otherwise, that would be that new rule that if you foul somebody on the breakaway, it's two shots in the ball. He got in front of him, but I don't think he can shoot these free throws. Kelvin Sampton asked Moore if he was okay, and immediately Edwards got off the bench. If the person who's entitled to shoot free throws gets hurt, the coach of the team of the hurt player can choose who shoots it. If it was a flagrant foul, if it wasn't a... Um, I got that wrong. If it's a flagrant foul, you can choose anybody. But if you have to substitute for him, the person that comes in has to shoot him. If it's not, the opposing coach can pick somebody on the floor to shoot the free throw. That's when he goes to the assistant coach, says, who are we sending out to the line? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what that, that's a good rule because the intent of it is you got a guy that shoots 20% from the free throw line. He gets fouled and, oh, my <laughs> hamstring. All oh, those back spasms yeah, popping up again. I can't shoot. But when somebody's hurt and they're taken off the floor, no, that's exactly what happened. The Rice bench chose Juwan Roberts. They put Tyler Edwards in, and he chose Roberts to shoot the free throw. Roberts makes the first. From St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, moved to Texas to Shoemaker High School in Colleen. Had a career high 15 rebounds off the bench against Hofstra. And as Coach Sampson said, he's the toughest guy on the court for Hofstra. He's why we won the game. High screen for Fiedler. Abercrombie. Fiedler. Guarded by Carlton. Inside Abercrombie. And a late foul called against Edwards. Uh, that's good recognition by Rice. Jamal Shedd was caught down low in a serious mismatch. He's guarding Riley Abercrombie, six foot ten inch sophomore. Look at the mismatch. Kyler Edwards comes into your screen and bails him out at the very last second. Yeah, that's a good call. Nice pass by Max Fiedler. He so recognized the mismatch. He pulled back and threw it over the top. Abercrombie began his career at Boise State before transferring to Rice. From Australia. Makes both. Houston with Sasser, Shett, Edwards, Roberts, and Carlton on the floor for Kelvin Sampson. Rice led by, Houston led by 29 at halftime.
Washington draws the fourth foul on Max Fever right there. Fever will go to the bench. Elijah Poteet will replace him. Now Marcus Sasser is getting close to a career high in points, rebounds, and assists. He's got 21 points, his career high is 28. He's got four rebounds, career high is six. And his career high on assists is seven, and he has five in this game. He misses there, Oliveri comes off the screen, misses it. Roberts, tough rebound, there's the toughness. Dewan Roberts. Coach Sampson says the game changed when he came in. They were not able to get the rebounds like they were in the first half. Yeah, they're going to call that on Josh Carlton. Threw his hip out into a cutting player. And Kelvin Sampson has no idea what he just called. Houston in control over Rice in the 83rd all-time meeting. Well, we talked about Scott Parrott. What do you say at halftime? You say, forget the first half. Come out. Let's play like the scores zero to zero. And so... If you're the Rice Owls, you're now up 15 to 14 in the second half. Abercrombie did not play in that first half, but he's been effective in the second half. Five points off the bench. Edwards misses that three. Abercrombie with another rebound. Passes in between two. Edwards with the steal. And foul by Evie. You and I joked in our open that if we set the over-under on three-point field goal attempts at 60, would you take the over or the under? We both took the over. How are we doing so far? We're doing really well. I think we're approaching 50. 44 so far. So right now it's looking good. Well, we looked at the box score from two years ago, a 97-89 Houston win. And on that night, 57 three-pointers were attempted. Two softs that time on the turnout from Josh Carlton. Unselfish pass out to Sasser for three. What a feed from Jamal Shedd. Marcus Sasser is going to be at his best when Jamal Shedd is at his best. What a rebound by Juwan Roberts. He, he has got a tremendous nose for the ball. He could not control the ball. He went flying in and just slapped it out to keep the ball alive. And again, his ability to rebound out of position is unbelievable. He was out there on the right wing, came all the way in, caught it, and then a terrific pass from Jamal Shedd. Classic penetrate and kick from Shedd. He drew three rice defenders, kicked it out to a wide open Sasser. You penetrate, you force the defense to contract. Sasser spots up, a tremendous execution by Jamal Shedd. He's looked really good here this evening. 12 assists on 22 made field goals for Houston. Tough defense on the inbounds play. Elijah Poteet could play a lot in these final few minutes. Four fouls on Max Fiedler. Poteet mishandled it. He's double teamed now. Out to Hutchins straight away. Three off the mark. And Edwards skies for the rebound. Tyler Edwards. He quietly had a double-double against Hofstra, and I wasn't aware of it at the time, but he finished the game the other night with 11 rebounds. Lydian White misses the three. Leapert with the rebound. Hutchins off the screen. A true freshman from Buffalo, New York, Noah Hutchins. Very number one, here's Leapert. Started by Sasser, gets the Poteet screen. Leapert. That was a foul. Yeah, nice rotation by Kyler Edwards. And, hey, if you think you're going to get the ball 35 feet from the basket and get all the way to the rim without a Cougar rotating over in front of you, then you may not have been paying attention during the scouting report. Uh, yeah, there's just going to be somebody there by the time you get to the rim. Sasser wants a teammate to come over. That's Kyler Edwards or... Great to see Tajay Moore back in the game with a wrap around his left hand. He had some kind of tape, and I, I wasn't sure it start the game, whether it was just on his wrist or on his hand, but uh, you're exactly right. That's good news that he's back out there. Sasser, step back three. In and out. 
Tough rebound inside. Xavier Francis into the game for his first minutes. A athletic rebound from White. Francis wears number five, freshman from New Orleans at a Montverde Academy in Florida. Didn't play against Hofstra. He comes off the bench here midway through the second half. Sasser so explosive into the paint. Cross contact. Yeah, I'm really anxious to see JV and Francis play. You talk to the coaches, and they just rant and rave about this kid. They talk about his upside potential. He's got this phenomenal body. He's got arms that may be longer than any human being I've ever seen. They, they expand 74 inches, and he's still growing. This kid's really, really young. Oh, I, I am anxious to see him play. Six foot eight, didn't play against Hofstra. Seven minutes, two points, a block and a steal in the exhibition against Montana Tech. It's funny, when I first saw him, he looks like an Olympic swimmer. He's got these shoulders, he looks like Michael Phelps, right? Imagine with me. He's yes, got these yes. incredibly long arms, these broad shoulders, tiny waist. I mean, he, he has got all of the physical gifts you can want in a basketball player. Here he is guarding Abercrombie on the perimeter. More great footwork against Sheffield. The foul calls. Two free throws coming. Tajay Moore, we saw the defense there. He had the game tie in three with 24 seconds left to make it 69-69. Jamal Shedd had the steal. Now, sister, Tajay, Tajay Moore is not a shooter. He, he's got a little bit of a hitch in his shot, but he has excellent shot selection. He's a transfer from Cal State Bakersfield. He shot a really high percentage. I mean, he was in the high 40s. He shot 80 from the line, shot 51 from the floor. And so you, you see those statistics, and you think, oh, this guy's just got a pure stroke. He does not but he has a really good shot selection. He doesn't four shots. Uh, the other night against Hofstra, he was perfect from the floor. Four for four, including the shot you referenced, the you know, overtime forcing three-pointer from deep in the floor. He had a few big shots in the second half when Hofstra was leading by double digits. Edwards from the corner. This ball foul underneath. In Houston basketball. That's called on Cameron Sheffield, the freshman from Georgia. I'm telling you, Tyler Edwards' shot is just a little bit flat. Hey, he's got that ball too low. He's a shooter, and he's frustrated right now. He was 3 for 14 the other night. He's frustrated. He's 4 for 11 right now, just 2 for 8. But when he watches the film, somebody over there on the bench is going to realize, hey, you've just got to get a little more heart on your shot. Free throw missed by Francis. This kid is going to have a lot of big games for this basketball team this season, Kyler Edwards. That's the fourth foul on Tajay Moore. So the Houston bench with Marcus Sasser. 26 points for Sasser. Free throws coming for Sheffield. The good thing about Tajay Moore, Reed, is he's very experienced. This is sixth season of college basketball. That's a lot of college basketball. <laughs> Sheffield makes both. Nice now in the bonus. More playing with four fouls. Good test for a veteran player with eight and a half minutes remaining. White attacking. Good touch. Seven points for White. Hutchins spinning against Shed. Shed already three steals tonight. Deep three for Hutchins. Kelvin's 
Samson is furious. Uh, they missed that offense collecting that air ball. I looked over at him, and he stomped his foot so hard, his knee's going to hurt tomorrow. <laughs> I say, golly, Coach, come on, you're up 32, and it was an air ball. High screen, Hutchins spinning. Kicks it out. Three corners short. Rebounded by Francis after the miss from Carl Pierre. Well, he might be thinking about the final play of regulation against Hofstra. Remember, it was point three put back on the clock. As Houston couldn't handle it under the basket. Edwards with a step back. More arc on that shot. Yeah, a little better because of really good defense. He had to get it over the outstretched hands of Jake Leeper, but that shot did look better. Edwards, 13 points. Owls trying to get back on defense. Nice finish from Jamal Shedd over a much larger player. Tested, they won, number one, but they were tested. They did so many things poorly. He had so many things that he could emphasize, points of emphasis with his team, and mostly to get their attention and go, look, if we don't play our best, anybody can beat us. And boy, they came out like that tonight. They are currently on a 6-0 run. They have forced 19 turnovers. Points off turnover favor the Cougars. Plus 28. Abercrombie misses a deep two. And the rebound pulled in by Francis, the freshman from New Orleans. Shed Moore, Francis, Edwards, and Roberts, the five on the floor for Coach Sampson. They've been locked in on defense. We're courtside, and we can see the eye contact, the communication, how engaged they've been, even with this large lead. Backside steal from Evie. Shed is not aware. Here comes McBride for Rice. Sheffield, nice finish. Good move. Jamal Shed, there was a screen up top by Francis, and there was about a foot and a half daylight when he came over that screen. Boy, if you've got the ball, you've got to put your shoulder into the into your screener and rub and don't leave any room for the defensive player to stay in position. Edwards backs it out. Gets the screen from Francis. Five to shoot. Good awareness of the shot clock from Juwan Roberts who will get free throws. Now Xavier Francis right now doesn't really want the basketball. He's posting up, but he's not calling for it. And you can't blame the freshman because right now his teammates want the ball. It has been all Cougars here. Now currently up by 34 points. Vane, they'll join the American right around the time their crosstown rivals are headed for the Big 12. Yeah, but as excited as Houston is and as impactful for the Cougars as joining the Big 12 is, uh, for Scott Para and the Rice Athletics and the entire school, equally impactful joining the American Athletic Conference. This is a great news for this conference. Uh, Scott and the football program, they're going to fit in good. And that is a very good partnership, and I I'm excited for Rice. Coach Para said this week about the news. He's coached all over the country. Rice has kind of a national recruiting pool. He says the recruits have been interested since the news that Rice is headed to the American. Shed attacking, rejected. Nice defense from Terrence McBride. Who had the block for Rice, Evie backs it out. Nice transition defense. Shedfield from the corner. Right there, it was Francis with the closeout. Seventh May three on 28 attempts from beyond the arc tonight for Rice. Shed for more. Roberts at the top of the key. Edwards went between the legs, lost it. Now on nine to shoot. Edwards wants it. Attacking with two seconds left on the shot clock. Beautiful body control. Rice rotated over. They were in legal guarding position. Tyler Edwards was able to turn his body and finish with the left hand. Sheffield blocks. Javier Francis. Well, there's those long arms we talked about. Javier Francis was inside the restricted arc. 
but as long as you leave the ground, you can go after the ball. And that's a pretty nice defensive play by the young man. Straight up, good block. Sheffield, 10 points tonight, five of six from the free throw line. He's been more aggressive in the second half. Hand off for McBride. McBride had the impressive rejection on the other end. Here's Abercrombie. Catch and shoot three off a screen, missed. Look at the leaping ability there from Tajay Moore. <laughs> the coaches say he's as athletic as anybody in the country, and well, I believe it. By the way, Brown is leading North Carolina 43-36 in Chapel Hill late in the first half. Nice. Anything can happen. We saw Navy win at Virginia on Tuesday. Pull up three from Kyler Edwards. Edwards has 18 tonight, he's seven to 14 from the field. Sheffield draws a foul. And how about that rebound? And how about that three ball from Edwards? Yeah. Tajay, Tajay Moore started all of this with a great rebound and they kicked it out. And I'm telling you, Jerome Roberts, he's one of those kids that he just has a nose for the ball. And Kyler Edwards, as you can see, is feeling more and more comfortable with this shot. Moore goes to the bench. He played through that bandaged, bandaged hand. The reception from the students, Ryan Elvin, a sophomore from Round Rock, has checked in. We're in number 20. He will get a shot up within about 20 seconds. Ryan Elvin is a shooter. I'm, I'm telling you, he's a walk-on, but that kid can shoot the lights out of the ball. Missed three, tapped over the backboard. Edwards was crashing the glass. Houston with 15 offensive rebounds tonight. Now Rice hasn't been bad on the boards at all. They're only down three, but Ryan, Al, Ryan Elvin checking into the game, saying, come on, man, I need a shot. The same week. 38 years since both teams have been ranked. That's pretty cool. A good time to be a Cougar. Eight straight wins for Dan Holderson and the Houston football team. They grind, pull up from the free throw. And look at Roberts crash yeah. in the glass. Hey, I mean, he, he just is so good at rebounding out of position. Open three. Abercrombie's had a nice second half. Didn't play in the first half. Yeah, he's making a pretty strong case to get some more playing time. Eight second half points for the Australian Riley Abercrombie. Roberts. Edwards slips it inside. Here come the Owls. The defense. And a put back there for Jaden Geron, the freshman from Fresno. corner. Ryan Elvin missed the open three. Students wanted him to shoot. Wow. Nice unselfish play by Kyler Edwards to give him a chance. They read it's early. We're less than 80 minutes into the season, maybe less than 85 with the overtime, but any observations from you about differences in this Houston team from last year's Final Four? Oh, man. It's too early for that. You know, this Houston team we're talking about losing Dejan Duro, a fifth-year senior. Clinton Grimes, who was just in his third year but had an incredible amount of experience. Justin Gorham, a five, a fifth-year senior. Uh, Bryson Gresham, a fifth-year senior. You don't just replace that. You, you know, forget the tangible things, the points per game, the rebounds per game, just the leadership. Well, that's not something you, you replace early. You, you hope you, you tell this team, hey, look, where we are is a baseline, and that's what we want to grow to. But, boy, it's not fair to this group of young guys to compare to one of the, not one of, the best Houston team that we've seen in the last 37 years. Double dribble. Xavier Francis after the pass for more. We thought more might be done, but they're 
Giving him extended minutes here tonight, even though he battled through that uh, hand injury. Abercrombie, quick release, left it short. Jamal Shed. Price much more competitive in the second half. 31-29 Houston since halftime. Roberts, nice feed. Extra pass. And look at Roberts getting the offensive board. Yeah, like he is just a rebounding machine. I love the way he's bought into the role. I heard him in a press conference and he said, hey, look, I'm going to go get a rebound. I'm going to throw it back to you, Marcus. You shoot again. And if you miss, I'm going to get the rebound and I'm going to throw it back to you again. 15 boards on Tuesday, nine tonight. More misses of three. Abercrombie turned away by Shed. Jamal Shed with the block. He had three first half steals. Yeah, that's six foot point guard blocking six foot 10 inch Riley Abercrombie. Oh, he's fouled. Man, he was hot. He was fouled. We could not hear the whistle over these students. He'll go to the free throw line. He is one of the fan favorites. <laughs> and one of the players' favorites, too. Everybody on the bench standing up and cheering. Oh, what a great play by Jamal Shedd. Man, that is excellent transition defense. This is the second. Listen, Ryan Elvin's a player. He's not just some guy, you know, oh, he's some hack that gets in the game. This kid can play. He missed that free throw, and he was frustrated and mad at himself. <laughs> Makes two of three. He might run for student body president. <laughs> he's got the votes inside for Tita Center. A steal for Tajay Moore. 20 turnovers for Rice. Comprehensive from Kelvin Sampson's group. Ali oh! thrown down by Tajay Moore. <laughs> Turn around from Abercrombie. Abercrombie's been great in the second half. Really good. Tajay Moore dunks that ball. Look where his head is. He dunked it at his forehead. Final seconds. Houston tested by Hofstra on Tuesday. They had to come from a 13-point deficit in the second half to win an overtime in control throughout. And a dominant showing from the Houston Cougars. They beat Rice tonight 79-46. to Now the practice after the Rice game is going to be a whole lot more enjoyable than the first practice after the Hofstra game. This was a dominant performance by Kelvin Sampson and his team, and they dominated from the get-go, and they dominated on both ends of the floor. If Kelvin Sampson saying this team needs to find an identity, boy, this is a nice step in that direction. Reed, 32 points in the paint, 34 points off turnovers. And Marcus Sasser had 25 Tuesday. He had 26 tonight. Uh,